Hey guys, today I wanted to talk to you about being nice. This one is, this one's kind of personal because I used to be a total asshole hairdresser. And I'm going to just sort of tell a little story about me and, and um, maybe how I evolved a little bit. I was working at a hair salon that um, we were encouraged to be kind of snotty and snooty to clients. And we would get hauled into the office and uh, talked to if we did hair that the management of the salon deemed not worthy of, of of our salon company. It wasn't like if we did bad hair. I mean, certainly you're not supposed to be doing bad hair, but we probably did a fair amount of bad hair as well. But if you did a shape or or something, and I remember for me, one, one of the times that I got as, like this isn't really part of the story, but one of the times I got hauled into the office for doing hair, this is in the mid 90s and uh, what we call a mullet today, we used to call hockey hair, particularly Canadians would call it hockey hair. So I was doing this guy's hockey hair and uh, it, he had like that very feathered big, but then like an absolutely glorious blown out mullet, like big and fabulous, like Billy Ray, amazing. And I got hauled into the office for this and I knew I was going to get in trouble for it but I, I was kind of looking forward to it I got hauled into the office and said we don't do hockey hair in this salon and I said but he's a New York Ranger and he was a really really famous hockey player and uh, used to play for the Canucks and so she was like okay well that's okay I guess but you're not to do that on anybody else who's not a professional hockey player but anyways um so we were really encouraged to either refuse work or or have a kind of snotty attitude. And I developed into um, a really, really snotty hairdresser. I was a jerk as a hairdresser. Now, you know, to paint a, a different picture, you know, I was young, I was thin, thinnish, thinnish. I had, you know, long hair and I wore my sunglasses in my hair. It was, it was very, you know, dressed very night at the Roxbury. It was the 90s, it was the mid 90s. It was, um, you know, shiny pants and and it was like oh did you see gucci came out with a new belt it was it was a really really fun time fashion wise but anyways i was a totally different person and um i'd walk around just thinking i was the shit and i was a i was probably a mediocre hairdresser but i was really really busy like i had built a very very good clientele for myself and i remember actually when i retired from hairdressing last year uh one of my clients i had it was really kind of profound because a lot of these clients stayed with me for for nearly 20 years since I first started at that salon in 1995 and then I retired in 2014. So 19 years, a lot of, of my clients stayed with me right from that that first month that I was on the floor. And one of them, she was crying and it was, I, I felt awful, but what an ego stroke. Like how, how incredible that I had like several clients in tears when I stopped doing hair, which was really, really powerful. Like I was very important to some of these people. And, um, one of them was telling me the story of when she first met me and she came into the salon and she said, oh, I, and I remember I started doing her hair very, very early on when I worked for this company. I didn't know what I was doing. Anyways, she uh, she said to me, um, wow, I'm really, really worried. I'm kind of stressed out. I think she was like 17 at the time. And, uh, and I said, don't worry, darling, I'm the best one here. And I'd been doing hair for literally like a year. And in that company, I'd probably just gotten on the floor two months earlier. I didn't know how to cut hair at all. And I kind of, I, I know I didn't believe I was the best one there because there were some fabulous hairdressers there. But um, she thought I believed it. And I think it, it, it helped that I was kind of cocky and arrogant that, um, that I guess I put out that I believed it. Anyways, so I built up a really, really big clientele and I started to do extremely well and making a great living um, and, and things were going really, really well. And I was on this path and, and my success was based on me being arrogant and producing good work, but being kind of arrogant and having some sass. And, and I consistently, I just got an email from another client who um, I had done her hair for 15 years and she mentioned, you know, how arrogant I used to be in the way I've evolved. And she used, a lot of my clients used to love coming into the salon for my attitude. And it's kind of crazy. I would just kind of do whatever I wanted to their hair. And I'd say, well, whatever, darling, it's for the greater good. I, they're coming in for an inch and I cut off three and it's like, well, your hair needed it. So get over it. Um, but anyways, so this is how I was. And I was dating a girl at the salon and uh, who is now my wife. Anyways, when we went off and we opened um, our first salon in 1998, it was just a two-chair salon and it was she was my fiance at the time. And it was just her and I in the salon. And she had a client say to her, 
um, she whispered in into her ear and it was just the two of us in there and we each had a client. She goes, oh my God, is that guy's name Michael? And uh, my wife's like, yes. And, and she goes, that guy is the biggest asshole I have ever met in my life. And she proceeded to tell this story about how she had sat in my chair about a year earlier and I had made her feel, I'd humiliated her by saying I wouldn't do her hair and they should, that she should take it back to the other side of the tunnel. I still think it's pretty funny because it was so outrageous. Um, but, you know, take it to the other side of the tunnel, honey, because we don't do that kind of work downtown. And um, and I didn't do her hair. And my, my wife, like, could you imagine? I mean, you should be fired from a salon. But we never got in trouble for this kind of stuff. I'd have stuff written to the owner about some of the stuff. And he never talked to me about it in a negative way. I mean, it was, it was I don't want to say it was allowed but, or super encouraged, but kind of. Anyways, so my wife was embarrassed to say that she was dating me, let alone engaged to me. So she was just kind of implying, oh, yeah, I just work here. It's just me and him and I work here. And yeah, isn't he an asshole? Um, so anyway, she pulled me aside afterwards and told me this story at the end of the day and just said, I just want, you know, I was totally humiliated. And I was like, but she wanted bad hair. Like, this is justified. And my wife was, uh, you know, telling me, look, there's lots of times that I do hair that I don't necessarily want to do. And... Um, and what I do is I do the best version of what they want that I can. And I try to steer them towards a, a more current balance. And I educate the client. So maybe we don't get that haircut today, but maybe we start planting the seed um, for work that that I know will look better on them as well. And, and also makes me happy as a hairdresser and, and makes the client happy and know that I care about them and how they look. And it's like, oh epiphany like oh my god that makes so much sense just be nice and establish the relationship and slowly um help steer them into better having better hair or hair that also makes you happy and and what a much more fulfilling relationship that'll be and at the time see as a hairdresser for me at the time oh my god i was on such a roll and then my phone rings and yeah it's snoop it's a great ringtone so don't respect um anyways uh I'm going to keep going with this. So yeah, I had this epiphany because for me at the time, all it was was about me and my experience as a hairdresser, as a rock star hairdresser. Now, this didn't mean that I was a total asshole to all my clients. And I certainly had relationships and I was certainly had deeper depths than just being this jerk kind of guy. But I had been very successful being this guy. And clients would come to me because um, I did good hair, but they also really enjoyed the visit. I mean, there are certainly some clients that that um, like a, a sassy hairdresser. And I, I definitely delivered on that. But it wasn't like I was just a walking total jerk to everybody, but I definitely had a, a bit of an attitude. And and so when my wife taught me this and and had this talk with me and I thought, oh God, it's just the two of us now. And I can't really buffer. I can't be fake anymore because it's just her. And I go home with her at the end of the night and she knows the real me. And she knows that I'm a good guy because she wouldn't be with me if I was a total asshole at my core. But I can't really be that guy because she's going to be disgusted by working next to this person. So I started being kind of a nicer person and developing a much more evolved um, approach to client care and to hairdressing. And that actually turned me into a much better person as a human. And once we were able to hire um, staff because it was just a two-chair salon, and once we got really, really busy and started hiring and training people, obviously this type of attitude in in, in good customer care was something that that we built our whole company on and, and foundation on and it ended up um you know for us we ended up developing a philosophy of hiring nice rather than hiring talent because we can teach anybody to do hair but you can't teach an asshole to be nice except for me um but i had more of a vested interest in being nice because a i wanted the girl and b i wanted to grow my salon business and um so it really, really worked. But being nice is so much more fulfilling in the relationships. And I think for those clients that stayed with me and watched the evolution of who I became as a hairdresser and as a person, our relationships became much, much deeper. And then it stopped being about the hair because honestly, if it's always about the hair and you're a salon hairdresser and it's always about the hair and not really about the relationships, it's not, you're going to get bored. And certainly you can have, like, you can be a super creative hairdresser, but you don't necessarily get to be creative on um, the clients that age with you and, you know, they go into their 50s and 60s and don't necessarily want super creative work. And you have to find fulfillment in work that is fairly simple 
Um, and that's where, first of all, I mean, it's another story, but finding fulfillment in basic work is something that I really had to work hard to do. And, uh, and I found a lot of beauty in those millimeters in doing little things that were happy or that made me happy as a hairstylist, but the client probably didn't notice. Um, but that's a different story. But developing deeper, more meaningful relationships and um, allowing me to be nicer to my team as as I helped put them onto a path of success and be nicer to my clients and, and client care as I put them on a path to, um, I don't want to say better hair, but a better hair experience in my salons and with whether it was in my chair or in my team's chair, it was a really, really powerful thing for me. And I think it's allowed me to grow a lot as a human. So... I don't know, like that's just a story about um, we can change and we can evolve. And um, some people are probably saying, yeah, you know what? You're still a total asshole. Um, I've met you. But uh, if you didn't know me then, it was way worse that back then. Anyways, I don't know if you get anything out of that. Maybe a little bit of inspiration. Maybe it's just an amusing little anecdote that went on for like 15 minutes. Uh, but that's all I have to say for today. Be nice. Sincerely be nice. Be nice at your heart and, and um, put that out there. Be a nice person and, and you're going to have a much more fulfilling day. Thanks so much. Oh, hair, do you think it's going to make him change?